What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Palantir stock, ticker symbol PLTR on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Friday, May 10th. All right guys, Palantir stock here today. Quite a volatile intraday session, but finishing down 42 cents a share. It's minus 1.95% in regular trading hours. Essentially flat, up just a little bit here in the after hours. Listen, let's take a look under the hood, pull out whatever bias we can by looking at the volume profile. We'll then move on to the psychological levels that, you know, the big money's watching, so we also need to pay attention to. Then we'll look at implied volatility, the expected move for tomorrow, and the directional bias for tomorrow coming from the chain. All right, let's do it. Let's start on the five minute with that little uh, volume profile analysis, peeling back a layer of the onion, looking under the hood, seeing what kind of bias we can pull out out of this uh, volatile intraday session. Listen, by the way, if you're new here, Palantir is a daily upload. So my goal here in the near term is 10,000 subs. Uh, we're getting close and I know we can hit it, but not without your help. So I'll keep the Palantir videos coming and I appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. So let's look at this from open to close. Now, here's the thing guys, off the open, we typically expect to see that quick volume fade, right? Well, here today, Volume held actually quite well. And then we saw peak volume on that intraday low candle, which by the way, you know, granted, it was a battle bar. There's some wicks there, which means that a lot of that volume on that big red bar was going to be or was buying volume, undoubtedly so. But the fact that we held such pretty, I mean, sustained elevated volume deeper into the open or into the intraday session than is normal. Listen, we certainly saw some bearish bias off the open there, but that didn't stop the stock from turning around and recovering most of that into mid morning. Okay, the, the bias kind of died down at that point, fading into the intraday session. And then the stock slowly kind of gave back some of that recovery into the close. And the reality is we really didn't see a whole lot of bias. I mean, you could argue that through here, we saw a little bit of um, lean to the bearish side with a little bit of out of context volume there on that pop. But then into the close, you know, we expect that last bar before the close to have a lot of volume. That's going to be the rebalancing bar uh, by funds, institutions. They're driving their algorithms, triggering them right before the closing bell to rebalance the portfolios before the end of the day. So we expect that bar to be large, but we saw four consecutive red bars on that normal ascending volume into the close. Um, but again, four consecutive red bars. And then that green bar immediately after the close, it, it's not really offsetting enough because it's essentially just a doji, just barely green. Okay, so it's not really doing much offsetting at all um, into the close and by the way, or after the close, and that bar is, is going to be overflow from the, uh, the rebalancing anyway. So all that to say, a little bit of bearish bias heading into the close as well to support this uh, nearly 2% red day. So, you know, if we're, not, if we're not remaining unbiased when we're looking at these things and what are, what are we really doing here? But either way, let's move on. Let's take a look at the psychological self-fulfilling prophecy levels that are so important because they're so commonly watched, starting with the 30-minute chart. Now, you guys can see here that we struggled to try to reclaim that 50 period here today again, we attempted to do so yesterday as well, and we failed again today. So listen, tomorrow bears. If you guys could continue to see us reject off that 50 period as it comes lower, you know, that's exactly what you want to see. Whereas bulls, it's kind of time to put an end to this trend by ripping up through the 50 period on high volume, just getting through it because we've been struggling to do so, and then retesting on low volume and bouncing away on high volume to really claim that as support, that could set you bulls up for a near-term test of that 200 period moving average. Now, let's take a look at the four hour chart. We'll move on here. You guys can see the four hour is a little different. You know, we're currently below both the moving averages that are specific and it's nearly 6% to the nearest one, which is the 50 period. I'll be, you know, we've seen Palantir move a lot in a single day, so it's not out of the question. But I got to be honest, I'm really only paying a lot of attention to the four hour if either of these comes back into play, okay, which would likely require a uh, relatively sizable green move intraday. If we get that, I'll be watching these two moving averages 
for a break and hold, trying as the Bulls try to reclaim those as support, which would obviously be a really great thing to see for, for Bulls. Now the daily. The daily is uh, the daily is the real story, okay? Because the daily is going to have the most eyeballs, and it's the most supported by that self fulfilling prophecy mentality that I believe TA really starts and ends at. But in the short term, guys, psychology is everything. So I don't want to undersell that self fulfilling prophecy mentality because it's so important. It is essentially everything in the very short term. Mid to long term, fundamentals take over. But in the short term, it's all psychology. Now you guys know we've been talking a lot about that $21.30 to $23 channel as of late. And today, we broke downside out of the bottom of that channel. Okay, now it's a day one break. Day one breaks need to be proved. That goes for both to the downside and to the upside for that matter. But here is, is, is our day one break to the downside out of this channel. Bears... That is what you guys kind of wanted to see. All right, Bulls, not the, not the best day that we've had here on Palantir, breaking downside. But again, it's a day one break, and it wasn't incredibly definitive. It's not very deep. It's not really on tremendous volume. So we're going to need to watch here tomorrow. Bears, this is your opportunity to really make that definitive. Retest 2130, reject hard, and then get down through 21. Bulls. Reclaiming 2130 on as much volume as possible and then retesting it and bouncing again on a lot of volume That would be a great thing to see in terms of reclaiming that as support getting back in this channel Which can help us, you know set us up for a move not only to 22 but up to that $23 Region to really get up and out of that channel Which is of course kind of the ultimate goal now implied volatility compared to the last you know two or three months again very low on Palantir we just had earnings, so that got crushed. If you're seeing IV crush, it's still falling each day since then, so this would be the culprit. Uh, but again, if you're looking to purchase new options, conditions are more favorable because there's less Vega value baked into those right now compared to the last couple of months. But again, it's, it's favorable if IV is low compared to your intended trade time frame. That context is very important. Because the time frame you're looking at can change the context of where IV currently sits, if that makes sense. Okay? Implied, or I'm sorry, expected move. We have an expiration tomorrow. Thursdays make our life easy. Okay? We can just take that at face value because the expiration is literally tomorrow's close. So the expected uh, volatility, the expected move by tomorrow's close compared to today's close is plus or minus about 50, 51 cents a share. So that is the expected volatility. But what about the directional bias? Okay, we had just under 400,000 contracts traded today. 265,000 were calls and 108,000 were puts. So relatively heavy call side bias out of the overall call put ratio. But look at this, guys. The short-term speculators. 111,000 calls. 31,500 puts. Listen, if you're getting value out of these daily Palantir uploads, all I ask is that you please leave a like on the video and then get out of here and enjoy your day. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.